Hi guys, welcome back. This is the Big So Along and I am Ginny. I should say if you're brand new here then just welcome. Um, as always, I'm really glad that you guys choose to spend a little time with me each week. Today, we are going to be talking about, where is it? My Maker's Atelier Holiday Shirt and Top. And we'll get to that in one minute, but before we do, I wanted to say a couple of things. First of all, I was at work on Saturday and I had the most pleasant surprise. Um, one of our viewers, Andrea Newbury, I think is her last name, who is from Howell, Michigan, stopped by to check out the store and presumably to see me, which was really, really lovely. Not only was that like super flattering that she wanted to come in and actually see me, but she was really awesome and we had so much fun. I think Andrea was in the store with me for about an hour. We did some nice shopping. She got some really, really cool things. And um, yeah, I was just super excited. And I did want to say to anybody who is ever in the Detroit area, I'm always at Haberman Fabric Store on Wednesdays and Saturdays, so stop by and see me. I would love that. Um, and thank you to Andrea for totally making my day. That was so much fun. Okay, now, on to more business. Before we get to our um, project for today, I wanted to say we had a couple of questions from um, on the... I have a hard time talking today, as usual. Um, a couple of comments from last week's videos that uh, video that I wanted to um, address. The first one is from Christine Barber. Hi, Jenny. Can you please explain the difference between scuba knit, scuba neoprene knit, double knit, and ponte knit? I prefer knits that are thicker and not as slinky as jerseys. Thank you. Yes, Christine, I can. Um, my parents are big scuba divers so I can tell you that the fabric uh, neoprene scuba fabric is not the kind of scuba that you find in a fabric store neoprene scuba is technically I think I looked it up here let's see I can tell you it is uh, a synthetic rubber produced by the polymer polymerization yikes um, of single molecules into giant multiple unit molecules. It, it, DuPont marketed this material as neoprene, a trademark name that has since become generic. Neoprene is what actual scuba suits are made out of. It is a rubber fabric. It is sewn together for scuba suits, but it is rubber. It is not a woven fabric. Um, and also you probably would never find that in a fabric store because it would be really difficult to sew on a regular sewing machine because a it is rubber and also I believe that you can probably get it thinner but my my stepmom told me that their scuba suits were all three millimeters thick which is pretty darn thick if you're sewing two of those layers together so anyways neoprene if you're sewing at home you don't need to think about it now, when you look at scuba on a website or in a fabric store, usually what, you're, what they're talking about is um, a lofty double knit fabric of finely spun polyester fibers that create a super smooth hand, low luster sheen, and a full body drape. I think that is a really good definition of scuba knit. It is a double knit. Ponty knit is also a double knit. Um, Ponte is a double knit interlock fabric with standout stability and firmness that's perfect for suiting. Ponte fabric has a stable sheen, sorry, can't read today either, a subtle sheen and incredible durability. Now you can get Ponte in different ways. Most of the time when we think about Ponte it's actually a little bit um, loftier, but you can get it in a very lightweight. In any case, a double knit is when you have a knit side, it's it's actually two layers of knit fabric. If you know if you know how to knit, you will know that there's a knit side and a purl side to regular stockinette stitching. When you when you have a double knit, you literally have a knit side, a purl side, 
a purl side and a knit side and those two purl sides are purled together so it's like two fronts and the back is stuck in the middle that's what makes it a double knit so to answer your question ponty and scuba are both double knits and since you tend to like things that are not as slinky that is actually a really good choice for you um ponty or scuba i like the drape of a ponty better scuba tends to have a little bit more loft and body but depending on what you're making they're both great options um, i believe that scuba is usually made of polyester um, ponty is very often made from rayon and i believe the what is called Ponte de Roma I think that is a rayon blend but don't hold me to that so there you go thank you for your questions um, if you if anybody else has has anything to add to that um, for Christine please leave it in the um, comments below and I will um, let everybody know next week um, okay let's see Okay, so our next comment um, that I wanted to talk about is from Carol Bart, who commented, Hi, I enjoy your sewing channel. You provide a lot of great instruction. Do you plan to do more sew-alongs? Yes, Carol, I do. And in fact, I'm going to talk about that um, at the end of this video. So, let me get situated here, and we'll get started on today's project, and then we will talk about our sew-alongs after that. So today we're talking about the Maker's Atelier Holiday Shirt and Top. This is, let's see, the sizing on this bust 32 inches to 42 inches. That's 81 centimeters to 106 centimeters. Now I'm going to put a picture up here really quickly so you can see that this, I did not measure the final garment. However, there's a lot of ease in this. I'm going to say... 10 inches maybe maybe eight but if you're interested you can you should measure the pattern because it doesn't have finished measurements on here but it is a generous size this is a drop shoulder uh, pullover top it has uh, the one I made has short sleeves and a fold back collar both versions have a little um, a cute little notch at the hem in the front and on both sides the version that I did not make has a hood, long sleeves, and a drawstring casing at the waist. Um, let's see, suggested fabrics are light to medium weight woven fabrics, including cottons and linens. The long sleeve hooded top would also work well in lightweight waterproof fabrics and oilskins. Um, so I made, mm -mm, what size did I make in this? I think I made the size 12. Let's see. No, I did. I made a size 14. Yeah, I made a size 14 in this one. Um, the 14 in this one is for a uh, 38 inch bust, a 31 inch waist, and a 41 inch hip. That's pretty close to what I am. My bust is 39, my waist is 31, probably. Um, and my hips are also 39, so I was 38 and a half. So, anyways, it's pretty close. Um, and you can see here um, in these pictures how it fits. I really like this pattern. Um, I chose to make this in a rayon triacetate, and somebody's going to ask me what that is. And to be honest with you, all I know is it's a really super slinky rayon, um, and I love it. It usually has triacetate. It usually has a um, shiny side and a matte side, so you can use either one. I've used both on different projects. This one, I used the shiny side. Um, not so sure how I feel about that because the downside to a rayon triacetate is it does wrinkle, and it doesn't wrinkle like this is linen, and I love the way it wrinkles, but rayon triacetate tends to look... Um, I don't know. I, I'm not crazy about the wrinkling and rayon triacetate. So, I, and it's much more noticeable on the shiny side. So, in retrospect, I maybe would have used the matte side, but I have to say that I just I love this fabric, and 
I actually bought this fabric with this pattern in mind, which almost never happens. <laughs> This is the second time I've made this top. The first time I made it um, a few years ago when I very first discovered the Maker's Atelier. I made this top and I made it in a linen, an old, a vintage linen tablecloth. And I wore it until um, it literally got holes and was like fraying all over the place. So I didn't have it to try on for measurements. I love the way this fits. I think I liked it better in the linen, to be honest. Um, although I will definitely make this again. Like I said, this is the second time I've made it and I do really love it. The other issue I have with uh, this is I don't really have anything to wear with it yet. <laughs> I put it on with these um, brown linen uh, Zeldas. They're a Tina Gibbons Zelda pant. And I put it on with that because that's what I had. But I, I am planning on making some pants um, or maybe even a slip or something to go under this. It's um, a little bit of an odd length maybe for me um, I maybe should have either shortened it or lengthened it like an inch or two I'm not sure I feel like the place where it hits me is just um, is just like straight in the middle of my hip so maybe that's not the best I don't know it doesn't that doesn't usually bother me maybe just because it's shiny and it's like bright I don't know you guys let me know what you think okay so my the bottom line is um, did I say what this is? You, yeah, I did. Um, it looks like you will need for 45 inch wide fabric. You're gonna need two yards of just about any for just about any size with the for the short sleeve. Um, for the long sleeve, 2.8 yards, so closer to three. If you're using uh, like 58 or 60 inch wide fabric you're gonna need like one and three quarters max for the short sleeve and two and a quarter max for the long sleeve with the hood um, this is not the first pattern I've made from Makers Atelier I actually I just I really love their patterns they're all very simple they seem to be pretty well drafted I've never had a problem with one they also just came out with a new shoot i can't remember what it's called but i'm going to link to them in the description below check out their new pattern it's a dress or top with a little tie at the front that's not usually my gig but it looks really pretty cool so check that out also um i just got an email i'm sure if you're already on diane erickson's email list you will know this already but if you missed it diane erickson is retiring a bunch of patterns and they are all on sale i think like for half half price until the middle of September so I will link to Diane Erickson below too if there are any of those um, patterns she's had for a while that you're interested in in picking up now is a good time because they're a really good price okay so that's all I have to say about the holiday shirt and top next we're gonna talk about our next so long for September I want to do a jacket for September and I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. Usually what I do is I just do, I pick a pattern and I sew something and I sew it from beginning to end and I usually do that in one video. However, that means I end up with a lot of <laughs> clothes. It means I end up making a lot of things that I don't necessarily use and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to slow it down by doing this. I'm going to pick a category. I'm going to give you guys some suggestions for patterns. You'll decide which one you'd like to make. And then over the course of two or three weeks, however long it takes us, I'll do the sew along. And I'll do a little more in-depth so I can show you some more specifics. And hopefully it will be a little bit easier for you guys to digest because I won't have one really long video. I hope that works. <laughs> so for the month of September, what I really want to make is a jacket. My um, suggestions for the jacket for September are number one, uh, Marcy Tilton for Vogue, and I'll put a picture up here for you. It's Vogue 1817. This is a, I'll read you the description. This is a Mrs. Loose Fitting Below the Hip Asymmetric Jacket and Vest. Have front button closing shaped lapped seams stitched hems B which is the jacket you could easily do the vest because I think it's just 
the jacket without the sleeves. But the B, which is the jacket, has a stand color with folded front edge detail, long set in sleeves with a slit. The fabrics um, are, suggested fabrics are cotton, flannel, taffeta, jacquard, lightweight brocade, quilting cotton, lightweight denim, lightweight jacquard, we said that already, um, lining fabric, and it is unsuitable for obvious diagonals. You would need for 45 inch fabric, the most you would need is for the jacket is going to be one and a quarter yards. Nope, sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> for the jacket, the most you would need for the size 24, you would need three and a quarter yards in 45 inch fabric or two and five eighths in 60 inch fabric. Obviously less for smaller sizes. Um, okay, that one is brand new. Well, brand new, yeah, like for fall. And it does look really cool. It has um, your typical Marcy Tilton um, quirkiness and detail, and it looks really, really cool. So I'm excited. I would love to make that one. Next one is uh, the Sewing Workshop Pearl and Opal Jackets. This is Pearl, it's a cardigan with front casing and drawstring to ruche, cascading side panels, back waist seam, long sleeves, and narrow hems. The wrong side of the fabric will show. Opal is an unlined hip length jacket with three buttons and a shawl collar. Pleat opens to form a front drape. Back princess seam, all in one back side panel and back sleeve. Wrong side of fabric will show. Suggestions. Um, so for Pearl, the suggestions would be, it would have to be a knit fabric. So Jersey, Ponte, which we just discussed, uh, novelty sweater knits. Oh no, you could make it in woven too. So it could be uh, linen, rayon, wool, silk, and novelty weaves. Just remember the wrong side of the fabric will show. For Opal, um, they suggest linen, wool, rayon, silk, and cotton wovens. Wrong side of the fabric will show again. Okay. For 45 inch fabric, you would need uh, three yards for pearl and three and a quarter for opal, that's max. 60 inch fabric would be two and a third for pearl and two for opal. Again, those are maximums. Um, bus measurements on this one go from, uh, size, from uh, 31 inches to 46 inches. Uh, hips 34 inches to 47 and a half inches. I don't think we really need to worry about waist because that's not going to be very um, obvious. So our cho choices in this one are pearl or opal. Again, I will um, link to all these patterns below so you can go check them out. Our third option is cutting line designs passport to style. This is and you know what I should say also, you guys, all three of these patterns, I believe, are only available as hard copies. So, keep that in mind. Um, okay, so for Cutting Line Designs Passport to Style, this is a high hip flared jacket, loose swing fit, asymmetric hems with front and back, sorry, front and back flanges. Uh, drop shoulders, patch pocket, left and right fronts are different widths to create softly draped lapels. Accent edge stitching and top stitching. Bracelet length sleeves, interesting collar ending at the front edge line of the garment creates a double collar effect but with one continuous collar piece. Suggested fabrics are handkerchief linen to medium weight linen, linen blends, blouse weight cotton, light to medium weight linen, linen blends, Medium weight cotton, too. I think that's just sort of repeated. Um, anyways, chambray, lightweight denim, tencel, silk shantung, dupioni, tissue weight wool, wool crepe, or silk organza. I really think you could make that jacket out of just about anything. Um, okay, so I have not made any of these jackets. I know that the pearl and opal jackets have been around for a while, as has the Passport to Style. I like all three of these jackets a lot. So, your job is to leave me a comment below or over on our Facebook page. 
Um, and again, I'll leave a link to that. Letting me know which one of these three patterns you would like to sew for our September sew along. Passport to Style from Cutting Line Designs. Pearl or Opal. Distinguish which one you like better. Um, um, from the Sewing Workshop or Vogue 1817 from Marcy Tilton. All right, you guys, sorry that was a lot to get in today. I really appreciate you stopping by. Please, um, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe and most definitely come back and see me next Tuesday when we will be talking about whichever one of our jackets we're going to be sewing for September. Until then, happy sewing.